This is the Yushin Gigaminx. I just recently unboxed it, and it is easily the new best turning Gigaminx on the market. But no matter how smooth and fast and fluid and stable that turning may be, I still have one big problem with it that I just cannot get over. Let me demonstrate by trying to do a J-perm. And as you can see right there, that is the problem. As I was trying to turn just these outer layers, this inner layer went ahead and moved right along with it. You might say, big deal, just don't touch the inner layers if you don't want to move them. But that's a lot easier said than done when the layers are as tiny as they are on the Gigaminx. I find myself having to adjust my turning style and like stick my thumb right here just to prevent those inner layers from moving. And this issue is exactly the reason that magnets became so popular on big cubes. It's not the same reason as on a 3x3, where you get that nice tactile snappy feeling and a bit of extra stability. No, the main reason magnets are nice on big cubes is because it prevents you from turning layers that you don't mean to. Most magnetic big cubes have a really clever design where the inner layer magnets are actually noticeably stronger than the outer layer magnets. That way, even if your finger is sort of bumping into that next layer down, it's still not going to go anywhere as you're turning the outer layers. Compare that to the Yushin Gigaminx, where if your finger is even touching that inner layer, well, yeah, it is just going to go along for the ride. So I think you all see where this video is going. Let's go ahead and try and solve this problem by adding magnets to the Yushin Gigaminx. That might sound like a pretty simple proposition, but let me just tell you, it's not. For one thing, a dodecahedral puzzle like this has 12 of these edge sections, and on a Gigaminx, you're going to need 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 magnets per edge section. That's a total of 240 magnets on this puzzle. And not only are you going to need as many magnets as on an 11 by 11 cube, but they're also going to need to be tiny and weird shapes and sizes, because I can tell you one thing, the edges and corners of a Gigaminx are not ideal for adding magnets to. And that's not even to mention how heavy the end result is going to be. This is already not a light puzzle, and we're about to make it quite a lot worse. But without further ado, let's go ahead and see just how bad it's really going to be, and open this puzzle up. I think the way I'm going to do it is just by unscrewing one of these center pieces. Alright, are you ready for this? The screw is out, and it's not coming apart. There we go. There is the inside of a Gigaminx. That looks amazing. Anyway, to magnetize a Gigaminx, all we have to worry about are the edges and the corners. So let me go ahead and grab one of each type of those so I can show you what we're up against. So here are the three types of pieces that we have to deal with. The big edges, the little edges, and the corners. Luckily, these all have very simple stickerless designs. Two parts for the edges and three parts for the corners. So they should all be very easy to take apart, just like this. Now it works out so that each one of these pieces gets exactly one magnet. Each one of these corner sections attaches to one half of these smaller edges, just like this, and the other half of the smaller edges attaches to one half of these bigger edges, just like this. Now luckily for this type of pairing with the bigger edges, as you can see we have a nice big shared wall right there that pretty much any reasonable size magnet will fit into, just like that. These are 5x1 magnets by the way, they should be really easy to glue in there and hopefully plenty strong, if not I can just add more on top of them, and the really nice thing is, these pairs with the bigger edges are actually the pairs that control the inner layer of turning, which again, is where we want to have the stronger magnets. So if we need to make them stronger, it's very easy to make these ones stronger. Now unfortunately, things are not so nice and easy when it comes to the other pairs with the corners. I mean, just look at that, where are you going to fit a magnet in there? That hole would be way too small to fit a magnet of any reasonable strength. So, what are we going to do? Well, take a look for a second. Where else could we fit a magnet? How about way down here? It'll definitely look kind of funny putting magnets all the way down here by the core, but it should work well enough for the Gigaminx. As you can see on the edge piece, there's plenty of room right there, and on the corner piece, there's a hole that's just big enough to fit an appropriately sized magnet. Just like that. Now I'm going with a normal 4x2 magnet in the edges, and a little tiny 3x2 magnet in the corners. They're not perfectly lined up, but I think it should be good enough for a nice magnetic snap in the outer layers, and hopefully good enough for the pieces to actually close once we glue them in. I don't think I've ever magnetized a puzzle with as creative a solution as this one, or frankly, any puzzle with as many pieces as this one, but I think it'll just about work out. Anyway, I think I've explained to you the whole plan, so it's time to break out the super glue, and then break this puzzle apart, so that we can go ahead and add 240 magnets. Let's go ahead and start the time lapse. Alright, 
That was a lot of magnets indeed. If 240 doesn't sound like a lot, just keep in mind that for every single one of these pieces, you first have to break it apart, grab each half, grab a template piece that already has a magnet on it, stick it onto that piece in exactly the right way, grab your super glue, put it on exactly the right surface, grab the right type of magnet, stick it on there, kind of nudge it around to make sure it's in exactly the right spot, then just sit there and wait for 10 or 20 seconds for the glue to dry, and then finally once all the magnets are in, you then have to put them back together. It might not sound like too bad of a process, it comes out to just under a minute per magnet, but once you multiply that by 240, that means it takes almost four hours to magnetize all these pieces. But besides taking a while, everything went pretty much according to plan, except for one thing that surprised me inside of these big edge pieces. Originally, there were four of these little posts here sticking up, but as you can see, now there's just three. So I actually had to remove this fourth post. As you can see right there, it's chopped off with the help of some heavy duty tools, and that's because when you put the two pieces together, that post actually sticks exactly where the magnet on the other piece goes. I'm not sure why there's a post there, it's not like there's any hole for it to go into, but nonetheless we had to chop that off on all 60 of these pieces just so that they would fit together after gluing the magnets in. But as you can see here, we can go ahead and construct a little corner edge section, and they all stick together perfectly with those magnets. I can already tell that the inner magnets are just a little bit stronger than the outer magnets, which is perfect, that's exactly what we want. But without further ado, we can also now grab all the other pieces that weren't magnetized, as well as of course the core, and then put this Gigaminx back together. Let's start the time lapse! All right, and here is the fully magnetic Gigaminx, now fully assembled. I will say in terms of first impressions, that this thing is noticeably heavier than it was before, although frankly, the Gigaminx is such a heavy puzzle in the first place, that adding a bunch of magnets doesn't actually make that big of a difference proportionally. Now the funny thing is, I went ahead and weighed this puzzle, and it turns out that it's actually still lighter than the original Shangshao Gigaminx. You wouldn't be able to tell it in your hands, I guess because this one is smaller, so it feels a little bit denser, but it turns out it's actually not that heavy. Anyway, until Gan finally comes out with their Gigaminx Air M, weight probably isn't going to be too big of a concern for Gigaminx speed solvers. Let's move on to what you've all been waiting for, the turning. So starting off with these inner layers here, and that is actually really nice. You have a definite tactile bump after every turn, but you also have just the right amount of softness, it's not too harsh of a click, and it kind of guides you into place perfectly. That's what those big wide 5x1 magnets are really good for, especially on a big cube like this. And as for the outer layers, okay yeah, that is just perfect. Definitely a little bit weaker than the inner layers, which is exactly what we were going for, but you still have that nice soft feeling because the magnets are a little bit deeper down into the cube. And as for the ultimate test, what I was doing at the beginning of the video, having my thumb just barely touching this inner layer here as I turn the outer layer, oh my gosh, that is perfect. My thumb is rubbing against it on every single turn, and it is not moving. So in theory, that means I should now be able to do my JPerm in peace without the inner layers going crazy. So let's try it. Oh my gosh, that is a million times better than it was before. As you can see, the inner layers were still bouncing around a little bit. That's because of that softness I was talking about in the magnets. So maybe having slightly smaller diameter magnets would still be ideal for those inner layers. But you know what? If I can do a JPerm like this without having to worry about those inner layers at all, then I am happy with the result of this Gigaminx. Even doing something like this on the original puzzle with this kind of speed would be next to impossible. You can definitely see those inner layers trying to move as I move the outer layers with my thumb rubbing against it. But again, the magnet are holding it into place correctly. So yeah, I would do a solve to show you how much better it is, but frankly, I think we discovered in the last video that my Gigaminx solve times are much more restricted by my poor Gigaminx skills than the actual Gigaminx itself, so that's probably not going to be too helpful. But either way, I can just tell you from these first turns that it has definitely improved, and if you yourself out there want a really good Gigaminx and you're willing to spend four plus hours gluing magnets into it, then I think I could actually recommend magnetizing your Yushin Gigaminx. As always, there'll be a link to buy the puzzle itself down in the description and you can get 5% off anything at thecubicle.com with discount code Z3Cubing. I've already mentioned the dimensions of all the magnets that I used. I believe they're all N50 or N52, and you can get them on eBay, or the cubicle probably has a few of them too. Anyway, yeah, that's pretty much it. I hope you all enjoyed, and I'll see you guys next time.